Hey, what's up YouTube? It's ICU. And today, finally, after seven beta releases and one week after we thought they would, Apple has issued iOS 10.2 to the general public. Now, this is a very exciting firmware for a number of reasons. Before we get into it though, be sure to give this video a huge thumbs up if you're excited about the potential first iOS 10 jailbreak for iOS 10.2. Now, it's exciting from a non-jailbreaker perspective because it brings a number of new features to the table, including a brand new TV application, which is absolutely awesome awesome by the way, tons of new emoji, and restylized old emoji, as well as so much more. There are a number of bug fixes and also stability improvements on iOS 10.2. In fact, from the about week or so that I've been using it on my daily driver, my iPhone 7 Plus, I've noticed a better experience overall, including better battery life, less lag, and less glitches. iOS 10.2 is as stable as it should have been when iOS 10 first launched. And from a jailbreaker's perspective, like I'm sure most of you guys are watching this video from there's also a lot to be excited about because this may be the first firmware that Pangu finally targets for an iOS 10 jailbreak so again super excited for that I'll keep you guys fully updated along the way click the subscribe button below next to my channel name to ensure that you don't miss out and we're also going to get into all of the finer details of jailbreaking more toward the end of this video we're going to go over absolutely everything you need to know including iOS 10.2's features now as stated by the title of this video, this is an important reminder. Remember guys, this is an update video only. It even says so in the title. We're going over 10.2's features and how it may impact jailbreaking. And like I said, I'll keep you updated anytime anything changes because the jailbreak situation is always dynamic, meaning it is in flux. Anything Apple does influences jailbreaking, but guys, I've got to say the future is looking pretty bright. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this. I'm actually just going to launch up settings and you'll immediately notice that interestingly, even though I am on a beta, settings general software update suggests that I am currently up to date. Now you may have also noticed this. The reason for this is because that I iOS 10.2 beta 7 is essentially GM, Gold Master, or the finalized version intended for public release. And to confirm this, we can just switch on over to Safari here, go to Apple's developer portal. I have an older cached version up here, and you'll notice for iOS 10.2 beta 7, the last beta firmware, the build number is 14C92. Remember, that was seeded on December 7th, 2016. But remember the build number again, 14C92. Now let's go ahead and switch on over to IPSW.me here, which is essentially just a website that pulls from Apple's own servers to allow you to download IPSWs or firmware restore files for use when connecting your device to your computer and trying to restore or update inside of iTunes. So let's just go ahead and select iPhone, then iPhone 7 Plus, and you may have caught it earlier. Again, iOS 10.2 has a build number of 14C92. So that's why if you're on iOS 10.2 beta 7, it's saying you're already up to date. There's no need to try to restore. Again, you are on the latest version of iOS 10.2. You can if you'd like, but again, it is redundant. All right, so what does iOS 10.2 actually offer and bring to the table? Well, I'm glad you asked. Be sure to strap yourselves in because there is a lot. For this, I'm actually going to pull on over my iPod Touch, which is on a lower firmware, so that way we can actually see the changelog inside of Settings General Software Update. And when we tap on Learn More, here we go. We have the full change log for iOS 10.2. We're going to go over most of it right here. And I'm also just going to be referencing my iPhone 7 Plus as well, which of course is on iOS 10.2 beta 7 GM. All right. So quote, iOS 10.2 introduces new features, including the TV app, US only, a new unified experience for accessing your TV shows and movies across multiple video apps. Emoji have been beautifully redesigned to reveal even more detail and over 100 new emoji have been added, including new faces, food, animals, sports, and professions. This update also includes stability improvements and bug fixes. And guys, that's what I was saying more toward the beginning of the video. I've noticed a much better experience on iOS 10.2 than on any previous iteration of iOS 10. Of course, that's to be expected, but Apple has really done a lot of stability improvements in iOS 10.2, so definitely good on them. I'm really excited for this firmware. Again, it's just a much better experience overall. Now, of course, we do have the brand new TV application. It says inside of features that we can use the up next section to see movies and shows you're currently watching and pick up where you left off. 
Also, get recommendations for new movies and TV shows in Watch Now, discover new apps and the latest iTunes releases in the store, and access the library for your iTunes purchases and rentals. So let's just give you guys a really brief rundown. Now, this is a very basic application. We just have four tabs. Again, library, watch now, store, and search. Inside of store, of course, you can acquire new content. Inside of library, it pulls from iTunes. So you can see I have some TV shows that I've downloaded here, as well as movies. You can, of course, sort them just by TV shows or movies at the top, but watch now is really where things get interesting. Now, this kind of aggregate all of your different subscriptions as well as applications that provide you with TV shows and movies. Again, if they do include support for the brand new TV application and it provides them here in one beautiful application. This is absolutely fantastic. I love it. You can see it is pulling from HBO now. This is the up next section so we can continue where we left off just as it said inside of the change log. It makes suggestions as what to watch and then we can also kind of just browse through different sections. This is really reminds me of Apple Music as well as the news application. Again, Apple has done a fantastic job with the TV app in iOS 10.2. We can also browse through different categories and so on, but we're not going to spend the entire time on this one application. Let's get back to the change log. We're going to go over it. I also wanted to say though that there is a brand new TV widget as well. When you're inside of the widget interface, you can add the TV widget there and the TV app for US users does replace the previous video's application. However, you can re-enable it just inside of the app store. You just have to search for it and then tap on download. Though it really won't download, it will just re-enable it basically. Okay, so let's move on. We also have beautifully redesigned emoji that reveal even more detail, over 100 new emoji, again, including new faces, food, animals, sports, and professions. So let's just go ahead and briefly launch up the notes application. Looks like I moved my iPhone 7 Plus to the back a little bit too early. You can see here, again, I'm not going to go through all of these, but we do have some new styles for a number of emoji. In fact, just right off the bat, inside of frequently used, you can see we have a new battery, new flame, popcorn, and pretty much all of them. And we also have the new ones. So we have the face palm emoji right here. That's probably going to be one of my favorites. We also have a selfie emoji that one has made its rounds quite a bit through the Apple news circuit. Absolutely everyone loves talking about the selfie emoji. We also have a clown one. And just quickly scrolling through here, you guys can get a brief glimpse at the new styles as well as the 100 new emoji. All right, so let's go ahead and move on from emoji because I'm sure most of you are more interested in some of the other features because we have some new improvements to photos as well. iOS 10.2, quote, improves stabilization and delivers faster frame rate for live photos, improves accuracy of grouping of similar photos of the same person in the People album, fixes an issue where memories might generate a memory from photos of screenshots, whiteboards, or receipts, also fixes an issue where the camera would stay zoomed in after switching back from the camera roll on the iPhone 7 Plus and additional support for raw digital cameras on the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. That part is absolutely epic. Shooting in raw is fantastic and I'm so glad that Apple's starting to allow that as a feature on the newest iPhones and hopefully they'll start to expand upon that and add APIs for it in the future. We'll just have to wait and see though. As for messages, there are new love and sell celebration full screen effects when sending an iMessage with an effect. And I have demoed those previously, so that will be up on your screens right now. And it also fixes an issue that sometimes prevented the keyboard from displaying inside of messages. Now, as for music, we have swipe up the now playing screen to more easily access shuffle, repeat, and up next, which is really great. We can also choose how to sort playlist albums and songs in the library. As for news, stories that you've saved for later now appear in the saved section. The best paid stories from channels you subscribe to will now appear in a dedicated section in For You. It's also easier than ever to get access to the next story. Just swipe left or tap next story while reading the previous story or the one that you're currently on. For mail, it fixes an issue that caused the move sheet to persist after filling a mail message. Addresses an issue with long press activating copy and paste in mail. Fixes an issue in which 
the wrong message would be selected after deleting a mail conversation, accessibility, there are a number of bug fixes here, and there are other improvements and fixes outlined right here below. One really great one right here is improves Bluetooth performance and connectivity with third-party accessories. That's awesome. Sometimes I personally do have issues connecting Bluetooth devices to iOS 10. Hopefully that won't be an issue now with iOS 10.2. Also, the changelog didn't make mention of this, but inside of settings, there is a new preserve camera option that essentially maintains the last mode that you're on inside of your camera app if you have it toggled on. The same also applies to filters. Beyond that, there are additionally three new wallpapers for the iPhone 7 and 7 Plus. They're exclusive to those devices. Also, the firmware does address two other things, a slight lock screen bypass bug, again, that's been addressed now, as well as the previous bug that caused you to have to force restart your device after watching a specific video inside of Safari. So sorry guys, that glitch will no longer work if you send it to a friend on iOS 10.2 and tell them to watch the video. All right, so that's everything iOS 10.2 really offers. Of course, there are some additional behind the scenes bug fixes that Apple didn't specifically outline in the changelog for the firmware. Just know that in general, it's much more stable than iOS 10.1.x and earlier. Okay, so now I'm sure what the majority of you are actually interested in, jailbreaking and how iOS 10.2 plays into jailbreaking. First though, I will say that if you intend to jailbreak your device, even though it's likely that Pangu will target iOS 10.2 for the first iOS 10 jailbreak, I do recommend staying on as low of a firmware as possible, primarily because any Anything could happen and Pangu could still be passed another exploit from a different developer or development team for use in a new jailbreak for an older firmware. In this case, it is possible if something like that were to happen that they could release an earlier jailbreak. So I do recommend staying on as low of a firmware as possible. And the only reason I bring that up is because that exact same scenario happened last year for iOS 9.1 after Apple had already stopped signing the firmware. A hacker by the name of Loki Hart gave them an exploit that they essentially just used and updated their previous Pangu iOS 9.0.x utility for support on iOS 9.1. So if something like that were to happen in the future, I don't want you guys coming to me saying, well, you told me to update. Right now, I'm telling you guys to stay on as low of a firmware as possible and only, and I'm really stressing this, only to update to a higher firmware if it is in fact supported by a jailbreak utility. So what I mean by that is if Pangu were to release a jailbreak, hypothetically speaking in about a week that supports 10.2 or lower, then yep, you'd be fine at that point to update. So at this point, I don't really wanna go on too much of a tangent because like I said, iOS 10.2 is probably going to be the firmware that they target. And I say probably because there's absolutely no way to definitively know. However, given what's happened in the past and what's currently happening, we can kind of piece together Together, what Pangu is likely going to do. Of course, official jailbreak developers absolutely never give ETAs. They never let you know what they're working on or what firmware they're going to target. The only thing that you can do is look at what they've done in the past and again, what's happening currently. So since Pangu hasn't already released a jailbreak for iOS 10.1.x and there are additional security vulnerabilities in 10.1.x that do not exist in iOS 10.2 because Apple has closed them, that definitely both the possibility that they will in fact target iOS 10.2 because we already know they are working on an iOS 10 jailbreak and if the vulnerabilities they're planning on exploiting for said jailbreak were in fact patched by iOS 10.2 then they would have already have released it and that same exact concept also ties into why we don't have a jailbreak utility currently because Pangu is smart they knew that all of the brand new features that iOS 10.2 offers and brings to the table would cause a number of of individuals to actually update to the firmware, effectively making their jailbreak, again, less effective because Pangu banks on actually having as many people jailbreak as possible for as long as possible. They are monetary partners with a company called 25PP that in fact is owned by another company called Alibaba, an absolutely massive company, essentially the Chinese equivalent of eBay. So there's definitely monetary incentive for their partners when it comes to jailbreaking and they need as many individuals, preferably in China, to jailbreak as possible. And in fact, speaking of Alibaba, a while back, an individual who is a lead security expert on the iOS as well as Android team at Alibaba said that a jailbreak was likely going to come soon and that they had inside information 
info from Pangu. And again, given the connection between Alibaba and 25PP, as well as Pangu, it's highly likely that this guy knows what he's talking about. I'll include a link to this video for reference in your cards now, as well as down below in the description. If you're interested, I highly recommend checking it out. During this video, when this news was actually breaking again, we were right in the dead center of iOS 10.2 beta updates. Now, if iOS 10.2 had closed the vulnerabilities that they were actually thinking about exploiting, then we already would have gotten a jailbreak for iOS 10.1.x. I mean, that's logical, right? So what that means is that if this info from this guy was credible, which it almost certainly is, then Pangu has their eyes set on iOS 10.2. And of course, this is going to be an absolutely awesome jailbreak release, guys, because iOS 10 is the best version of iOS that we've ever had, and iOS 10.2 is the best version of iOS 10. This is the perfect opportunity for Pangu to strike. Like I said, though, anything could happen. Like for instance, I really don't want this to happen and I don't want to jinx it, but if Apple put iOS 10.3 into beta testing, that may delay the jailbreak. However, just like what I said on the segment regarding iOS 10.1.x, if that were to happen and they discovered that the new firmware in beta closed the vulnerabilities that they were intending on using, then they would rush it for the current public firmware again, iOS 10.2. Either way though, it looks like we could very well receive a jailbreak shortly. Of course, things do happen, so to be notified when they happen one way or another, if we get a jailbreak or if it looks like things may be delayed further and you want to essentially stay in the full loop on the jailbreak situation, click that subscribe button below next to my channel name. You can also like me on Facebook and follow me on Twitter for even more frequent updates. I'm hopeful that I'm going to bring you guys some really awesome news shortly. And until next time, this is ACU signing out.